peace to you from God our Father and through our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, fellow redeemed. The gospel lesson for today will serve as the basis of this message, and it was just read a few moments ago. Aging is not for sissies. I remember the first time I heard that saying. It was spoken to me by a shut-in member, an elderly shut-in member, I might add. And he went on to share some of his anxious thoughts. As I become more dependent upon others, how can I avoid becoming a burden? Will my savings, my fixed income, be adequate to carry me to my last day on earth? Will my health insurance cover the expenses should I have a catastrophic illness? One lady with a great sense of humor had a sign posted on her refrigerator. It read as follows. Be kind to your children. They will choose your nursing home. Life in this world seems to have a lot of uncertainties. And they seem to increase as we get older. Thank God we have Him. We know Him. And we believe His Word. When those uncertainties arise, we find certainty in Him. The Apostle Paul says it so well in his letter to the Christians at Rome. For I am certain that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. When we think of that love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord, we think of, of course of the cross, where the Son of God died in order to give us the assurance of sins forgiven and life with God forever in heaven. Jesus died a criminal's death so that we can be set free from our bondage to sin and the power of of Satan. To prove his victory over the clutches of death, he rose from the grave, leaving behind an empty tomb, and showed himself alive on many occasions to those who believed on him. When those fearful disciples, with all their uncertainties, saw their resurrected Lord, they were no longer afraid. With boldness and confidence, they proclaimed him as Savior and Lord, as King forever, wherever they went, even though it meant for them imprisonment and martyrdom. The important thing was the certainty they had of Christ being Lord and victor over death and sin and Satan. The symbol of the cross above our churches and above our altar are constant reminders of those truths. Now let your eyes move from the cross over the altar to the right of the altar. Under the veil, we see, or know we will see soon, the elements of bread and wine. Another powerful symbol of that love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord and how he nourishes and strengthens us each day with food for the body and food for the soul. In addition to our Lord's resurrection on Easter morn, do you know what other miracle in the ministry of Jesus is mentioned in all four Gospels? Well, you've had a pretty strong hint 
with the reading of the gospel lesson for today. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all four gospel writers, are inspired by the Holy Spirit to record this feeding of the 5,000. No other miracle in the ministry of Jesus receives that kind of attention and that kind of coverage. Stilling the storm at sea, feeding of the 5,000, more important. Cleansing of lepers, feeding of the 5,000, more appropriate. Healing of all manners of disease and infirmity, feeding of the 5,000, more powerful. Well, even raising Lazarus from the dead, feeding of the 5,000, more applicable. All those less, lesser miracles were certainly important and met a need at that particular time. But the feeding of the 5,000 not only helped that crowd with a free lunch, it helps us in our struggles with uncertainties, the uncertainties of life. First of all, it is safe to assume that the crowd of 5,000 plus was a crowd of believers. Why? Well, because when Jesus concluded his teachings and sailed away from them, they were not done listening to him. They hungered for more. They pursued him on foot by following along the shoreline. These were not skeptics who were indifferent to his message. They wanted to hear more, just like us gathered here in worship this morning. Secondly, when this same crowd in the new location listened intently to Jesus, they lost all track of time or the fact that they had not even eaten recently. The disciples were the ones who brought that up. They urged Jesus to dispatch the crowd so that they could go into nearby villages for food before nightfall. Listen to our Lord's response as recorded by Matthew. Jesus said, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, we have only five loaves here and two fish. He said, okay, bring those items, those groceries to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. And taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed them and broke the bread and gave the loaves to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and they all ate and were satisfied. When the disciples realized that they were lacking in the number of or the amount of food needed to feed a crowd of that size, they were uncertain what to do. Have you ever been in that position? Jesus then takes over. The time was right now to make it happen by means of a miracle. You know, when we realize that we're not totally self-sufficient and are uncertain what to do, just like those disciples, and are ready to turn to God, trusting that He will provide, then He does provide in ways far better than we ever imagined. Have you ever had that experience? If you find yourself shaken by the uncertainties of life, take it to the Lord in prayer as the hymn writer says. And that's what Jesus commands of his disciples with their meager bag of groceries. Bring them to me. The next time you pray the Lord's Prayer and come to that petition, give us this day our daily bread, think about the feeding of the 5,000 and the fact that they all, quote, ate and were satisfied. 
In his small catechism, a book of questions and answers for the purpose of instructing people in the Christian faith, Dr. Martin Luther answers the question, what is meant by daily bread? His answer, daily bread includes everything that has to do with the support and needs of the body, such as food, drink, clothing, shoes, house, home, land, animals, money, goods, a devout husband or wife, devout children, devout workers, devout and faithful rulers, good government, good weather, peace, health, self-control, good reputation, good friends, faithful neighbors, and the like. What did he leave out? All the aspects of life are covered by this petition. Clearly we have no control over the many things under the label daily bread. But God does. And just as the crowd ate and were satisfied, we can be assured of satisfaction under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. He promises to always love and care for us and provide for us. When he calls himself the Good Shepherd in John's Gospel, the 10th chapter, he says, I know my sheep. I call them by name. That happened on the day of your baptism when Jesus merged his life and sanctification and righteousness with yours. Someone has said it this way. We may not know what tomorrow holds, but we do know who holds tomorrow. That's an important concept. That's the essence of hope. Hope in this life and hope in the life to come, founded surely upon the victory of Jesus Christ for us over sin, Satan, and death itself. Do you know what the Christian symbol for hope is? Any sailor worth his salt would know this. It's an anchor. Picture a little ship on a stormy sea. And all of a sudden that anchor goes down to the depths below, held by a chain, and sinks into the terra firma. And when the slack is removed and the ship is stabilized, it is secure. And the storm no longer is in control. And that's exactly the way the Lord works in our lives, giving us that hope, that assurance by the victory of Jesus Christ. You know, your worship here at Grace Lutheran always concludes with a celebration of Holy Communion. Wisely so. In addition to nourishing us daily with food for the body, our Lord provides nourishment for our souls as he gives us his very own body and blood in, with, and under the bread and wine. Have you ever been to a reenactment? I have a sister-in-law and brother-in-law who live in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, which is not too far from Gettysburg if you're familiar with that area. And quite often, at least once a year, there is a reenactment of so many of those battles that were a part of the Civil War. And people, locals, get into uniform and go into the various battleground areas and play as actors in that battle to recreate the scene. A phrase that accompanies our celebration of Holy Communion is Jesus saying, Do this in remembrance of me. So as you come forward to receive the sacrament this day and all the days to follow, 
Think of yourself as being a part of that crowd, sitting in a group on the grass, watching what the master will do with those meager elements and how the miracle of life, salvation, and sustenance is provided generously by our King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Do that in remembrance every time those uncertainties of life may arise and challenge. Jesus is Lord. He is the miracle maker. He is the master of all that exists. And he loves and cares for you daily. Give us this day our daily bread. Amen.